Hi class, my name is Lauden Hart, and as we begin today on the first slide, I want you to first close your eyes and think back to those one or two teachers in your life that simply stood out in a positive way and affected you in your education. Okay, have someone in mind? You can open your eyes. What made these teachers stand out above the rest? It could have been her or his excited or sentimental facial expressions, or the way she made eye contact with you and you knew she was communicating to you just how special you are. Or she would affirm you with a hearty high five or pat on the back. Maybe her classroom was set up in a fun way where you could collaborate. Did she spend a lot of time with you and your classmates at your desk instead of sitting in the back of the classroom? Did you grow interested and appreciative of the subject she was teaching on? Did you strive to work harder in this class versus other classes? All of these are characteristics. All these characteristics are aspects and results of nonverbal immediate behavior. Your teacher was nonverbally communicating with you through her gestures, facial expressions, eye contact, touch, and even the environment of her classroom. The way she communicated affirmed you and encouraged you to be a better student. As we move on, we're going to address the importance of immediacy in the classroom, nonverbal communication, and how pivotal it is in cultivating immediacy, and the integration and effect of nonverbal immediacy in the classroom. Nonverbal immediacy in the student teacher relationship is invaluable, resulting in teacher credibility, student effect for teaching, increased student motivation, reduced student anxiety, reduced intimidation, gained student attention, and ultimately a strong connection between the student and teacher. Let's move on to the next slide as we discuss what immediacy is and why it's so important. Our textbook communicates for teachers, our textbook Communication for Teachers by Chesabro and McCroskey on page 53 defines immediacy as physical or psychological closeness. And on page 79, the effects of teacher-student immediate relationships are addressed, including increased student effect for the subject matter, increased student motivation, reduced or alleviated student anxiety, and reduced intimidation. On page 94, we go on to see that immediate teaching sets a positive tone in the classroom and helps gain students' attention. Without students' attention, even very clear teaching is unlikely to be ignored or missed by students who are attending to other things. As you can see, immediacy is much more than a student simply enjoying the presence of a teacher or a teacher naturally being a likable person. Immediacy is crucial and should be intentional for the long-term and educational investment of a student. Subject matter becomes relevant. They enjoy studying. They're motivated to do their work and come to class. They feel comfortable in the classroom and simply just pay attention. In a non-immediate classroom, the same student could be completely apathetic towards his schoolwork and class time. One class of apathy could snowball into a mindset of apathy for years to come. Immediacy in the classroom sets a precedence. It gives students hope that they can enjoy their education, the content, and the overall experience. They no longer feel forced or trapped in a class, but they are excited to engage in their education. As we move on to the next slide, we're going to address nonverbal communication. According to a study done on nonverbal teacher-student communication in the classroom, on page 2627, the study states, 65% of meaning is communicated through nonverbal communication. So that means you say more with what you don't say. An intentional and positive nonverbal communication in the classroom is imperative in establishing immediacy. There are several categories nonverbal communication in the classroom can be grouped into. These groups mentioned in, on pages 70 through 78 of our textbook are instructor appearance, gesture and movement, facial behavior, eye behavior, space, touch, environment, scent, and time. Let's move on to the next slide as we delve into the first category of nonverbal behavior, instructor appearance. Instructor appearance is important in communicating receptiveness, credibility, and likeliness to communicate with students. On this slide on the left is a professionally dressed instructor, and on the right, a casually but appropriately dressed instructor. Which one are you more likely going to walk up to and ask a question? Which one are you going to see as more credible and intellectual? How an instructor dresses must be congruent with how she wants to be viewed and accepted by her students. Moving along, let's discuss the use of gestures and movements on the next slide. Gestures and movements are important in revealing an instructor's true feelings, as well as communicating closeness and openness to students. Closed, folded arms, shown in the image on the right, will tell students, I'm not willing to work with you, while open arms and body structure on the left are shown and insinuates an openness and willingness to work with students. Let's transition to the next slide to discuss the importance of facial behavior. Facial behavior can indicate interest and affection for a student and material. It can also indicate boredom, disgust, or even anger. 
An instructor must be intentional in her facial behavior in order to communicate interest, affection, and openness with her students. On this slide, we see facial expressions depicting annoyance, excitement, and frustration, all emotions teachers feel in the classroom. Teachers must be aware of their facial expressions and ensure that they are communicating positive emotions to students. No matter what language you speak, a smile and a frown are pretty universal. Facial expressions cross cultural boundaries. In a study titled Measuring Facial Expression by Emotion on page 458, it was identified that there are strong similarities in facial expressions between people of different cultures. Now that we've discussed facial behavior, let's move to the next slide to focus in on eye behavior. Eye behavior can indicate interest and a personalized communication with a student. On the left, we see diverted and nervous eyes. The individual has broken eye contact and is maybe contemplating something. On the right, we see engaged eye contact. This communicates interest in the individual, individual in conversation. Imagine your professor had a specific look they gave you. It's almost like a secret handshake, and they're saying, hey, you matter so much that I want to remind you and want you to know that I'm listening to you. Let's move on to the next slide to discuss the instructor's use of space. Instructors' use of space is important in bridging relational gaps. On the left, we see an image of an instructor working directly with her students. When she makes herself available by being near students, they're much more likely to ask questions and feel closer to the teacher. When an instructor sits at her desk in the back of the classroom and never walks up in between desks to talk to students, it's most likely students are afraid to go talk to her. Touch can also be a valuable nonverbal communication tactic to increase immediacy in the classroom. It coincides with the use of space. An affirming pat on the back or high five can signal affection and immediacy between a teacher and student. The teacher expresses her pride in the student and the student receives the affection and is encouraged by it. Moving on to the next slide, we're going to address the environment of a classroom and why it's so important. The layout and decorations of a teacher's classroom is important in establishing a comfortable, distraction-free, student-friendly classroom. The images on this slide display a collaborative setup and appealing decorating. When you enjoy being in the room, you're likely going to enjoy other aspects as well. You feel comfortable and open to receiving new information. As we move on to the next slide, start thinking about those times that you're in public and you get a whiff of horrifically strong perfume. Not fun, right? It's important for the instructor to be aware of her scent and not wear overpowering perfume. This can be a distracting, annoying, and overall simply decrease immediacy in the classroom. Now, we can move on to the next slide, the final component of classroom nonverbal behavior. Proper use of time is key in gaining students' respect and affection. They don't want to feel like they're wasting time in your class. Break lectures up with activities, be early for class, utilize the entire class time. Show students that class time matters and their time matters. We can now move on to our last slide of the presentation as we address the why behind the what. The ways of nonverbally communicating in the classroom are imperative in forming nonverbal immediacy with students. According to a study done connecting teacher immediacy and credibility on page 267, immediacy is recognized as the instructor behavior most frequently associated with credibility. And when instructors are viewed as more credible, they're viewed with more confidence, trustworthiness, goodness, and, and students report more greater motivation and increased cognitive learning. According to a study titled, titled The Relationship of Instructor Self-Disclosure, Disclosure, Nonverbal Immediacy and Credibility to Student Inclivity in the Classroom, on page 6, nonverbal immediacy is resulting from strategically used nonverbal communication. It has been associated with a range of positive instructional, out, instructional outcomes. It was most highly associated with effective learning, suggesting that its effect is primarily relational in nature. It promotes a communicative connection that enhances the student-teacher relationship. The idea of immediacy in the classroom stems from the simple truth derived from a study on immediacy on page 178 that people are drawn towards persons and things they like, evaluate highly, and prefer. And they avoid or move away from other things they dislike, evaluate negatively, or do not prefer. When nonverbal behavior is used strategically and appropriately, students are drawn to their instructor and motivated in their schoolwork. When nonverbal behavior is not used strategically or appropriately, students will dislike and negatively view their instructor in their coursework. The process is simple. Instructors first begin with intentional, strategic, and positive nonverbal communication. The use of this communication establishes immediacy in a classroom within the teacher-student relationship. Increased immediacy results in teacher credibility, student effect for learning, increased student motivation, reduced student anxiety, reduced intimidation, gained student attention, and ultimately a strong connection between the student and teacher. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.